Fantastic. Yeah, Diana did hers in five minutes. Diana, if you want to send it over just to show, oh. like it's really fun. Um, so this is a different teapot, but similar, obviously. So really what these exercises are about is drawing, which everybody needs help with, and color mixing, which I think everybody needs help with. And then after that, you get to have a little fun. So play, this is just sort of a way of encouraging you to think about your backgrounds later. But teapots are good because they have a lot of structure to them and sort of extra structure. Uh, let's start with ours. Yeah, I, I painted with a really thick brush. So and you, took, you did it in five minutes. Hold on, Diana, you want to hold yours up? Do you have it around? I, I sent it across the... Oh, you can send it across the fed. Hold it up since you've got it, if you've got it. Yeah, no, I got it. it. Hold it up. See, she did that in like five minutes or 10 minutes, maybe. Yeah, 10. It was having kind of a uh, exhausting day from work. It was a great way to unwind. So yeah, um, as we're getting through, so we're going to start with this. All right. So before I go to this uh, subject, tell me what direction the light's coming from. Can you guys tell? Left. Left, Left. right. How can you tell? The, the shiny part, the reflection. That's part of it, right? These uh, reflective, but there are reflected edges in the dark areas too. So what really tells you that this is light and this is dark? The shadow. Yeah, it's it's darker over here, which you can really see, right? It's with some weird little light reflected edges, right? Because it's a shiny object, but mostly it's kind of lighter here and it gradually gets darker. Um, so I thought we would play with this idea. Um, but most importantly, I really want to talk about drawing structure of teapots because I think this is something people mess up a lot. I think you think you sort of people try to guess where this is, they try to guess where the handle is, and it really uh, uh, there's a better way to do it. What is that way? You know the way. We're going to start by treating these subjects separately. So the base of the pot we're going to deal with first. Muka, what was that? Where is she? Oh. She wants me to rescue. Anyway, I don't even know where she is. Uh, we're going to start with this middle part of the pot. Then we're going to deal with this. And then we're going to deal with this section, right? The handle. So we're starting with this middle section of the pot so that we can give ourselves some, oh, I'm sorry, Diana, I was supposed to remove that. Um, so that we can give ourselves some, uh, some sort of uh, guidelines to go on. We can, we can create our map. Uh, so I do that, of course, by sketching in, here we go, that's like super visual, sketching the top and bottom line and then finding the halfway point. I'm never going to get tired of saying this, finding the halfway point. You can see, uh, is that right? One, two, yep. Sometimes it looks wrong, but it's actually right. And then finding the quarter points. So I'm sort of guessing where I think the halfway point is, and then I'm checking it. Let's be a little bit more accurate taking a paintbrush and I'm marking and lining up the halfway point uh, with the top and my finger with the bottom, and then I'm checking it. Wow. So right here, I can see that this does not feel like the halfway point, but it is. <laughs> That's why people tend to get teapots wrong, right? And then of course, we're gonna draw a line across the middle so that we kind of know where what what is on the top what is uh, on the top half and what is on the bottom half of this teapot and observe what it also does it helps us to kind of locate where we it starts to help us locate where we put these other objects when we get them and then of course i'm gonna what's the next thing i'm gonna do what am i gonna do next 
Any guesses? Diana knows. She's like, do I say it? No, I'm not. <laughs> I'm what is the next thing I do after I find my halfway point? I want to say a negative space, but maybe it's too early. It's too early. There's no negative space yet. I need to find my quarter points cool. and my vertical line. I'm going to ask this again. These should all four be equal. One, two, three, four. Find my quarter points. My quarter points give me more information, like where my lid starts. Like if I were to draw this straight across, let's see to have a mover for this part. Oh yeah, they give me a lot of information. All right, tells me. So I'm going to start by just doing, wait, sorry, that's too high up. There, that's better. Yeah. So I'm going to start by sketching in just this body. I feel like this is a little bit, anyway. Might be slightly slanted. So I'm gonna get a pencil, an HP pencil, to start this sketch. Oh yeah, I'm gonna do one more thing before I get started. I'm gonna check a, one more measurement. I'm gonna check the width of the body of the teapot at the halfway point. And we're gonna line it up with the height. And if you observe, it's really almost at the top. It's where the lid starts. Here. So Jessica, what are you working on? Sorry, I had Hi, to come off mute. Hi. 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 Can um, I get- Oh, I'm just drawing. Nice. Let me let me get going here and then we can chit chat. I just want to like get that going. Okay, so I'm drawing a vertical line. Any size I want. So I better be careful about this because I want to make sure that I have enough room for my handle on either side here. So I might bring this over just a little bit and also for my spout. Let me bring it over just a little bit. There we go. All right. Here's the top and here's the bottom of my teapot. It is not necessarily the same size as this. In fact, it is. Uh, it's about the same size, but it doesn't have to be. Really, all it needs to be is a vertical line divided in half. And then quarters. Right. And then I come up to about here, which is nearly the top, to mark out my width at the halfway point. That's here. Are you still doing faces, Jessica? Yeah. Sorry, I have to come on and off mute because my pencil sharpener is really loud. Yes, I'm still drawing faces. That's my focus awesome. this month. Awesome. Uh, I'm going to bring it in just a little bit on either side. I also know that these sides are equal because we're looking at this uh, teapot from straight on. So that's the start, right? We're just going to focus on the body. We're going to add in the handle and the spout later. 
So make sure you leave a little room on either side for that. See, I'm just literally Notice it's really flat here. Start to get this shape. And then it kind of curves down. And then, oops, a little too low. Look how easy it is to kind of drift out of your proportion. If I can, you know, out of your kind of map, your little measure. If I can do it, definitely you can do it too. It's very normal. Uh, it makes a difference in the end. At the end of the day, it kind of makes a difference. Straight here. And then when we get to the top here, and actually, if we really want to be accurate, let's look at where these things, there's a curve in, I don't know if you can see it, and it comes at about here. So I need to bring my straight line kind of up to here, right, lined up with here, and then I curve in kind of right above the last quarter. I, I can round this out later. I can kind of adjust these shapes later. But what I really want to make sure I get is the, the kind of the proportions correct. That's the big thing I'm aiming for. And if I'm dealing with these things too early, uh, it makes it confusing. So once I've done this, oops, I see my problem. There we go. Then I can get my lid here. Kind of working the outside shapes first. And it goes up. And remember the top of the lid does not go any higher than the top of your line. So I think the thing that's like the hardest about these is simply um, that like we want to sort of create just sort of simple curved lines and really everything's much more geometric than that. It's rounded, but rounded objects have a lot more straight up and down plane changes. For those old folks among us, I like to like myself who think in gender norms, like it's the same as like when you're drawing a man or a woman figure, right? When you're drawing a man, you wanna make everything sharper. There's a lot more rounded edges. Um, it's so cute, Diana, it's just the cutest. <laughs> I love it so much. Um, when you draw women, you want to make them more rounded. They really are more sharp edges. Like with this combination of like sharper edge and softer edge plane changes. And then there's this inner shape. Observe how the lid kind of works. 
You froze there for a minute. Oh yeah, I see that. Ah, just an in unstable internet connection. As usual, as per usual. This actually comes down. Right, so as I'm starting, bring that in. Observe the, you can't see all the way around this little lip here of the edge. I see like a little bit like this, it goes to about here. And then the lid kind of rises up. And then there's like a, a kind of a straight line down on either side and another. You might be playing with this one for a while, but and I'm ignoring this because I don't really think it's necessary. So I'd like to see, before any of you go anywhere else, before I go any further, I wanna see your, um, I want to see uh, this shape, this middle shape of the body of the teapot. And I'd love to see your measurements. So I'm going to send a picture across and I want you to send this to me. I do not want to see teapot or spout. If I see handle or spout, I'm going to make you erase it because I am I'm sure it will not be correct, correctly placed. Um, I want to see that you're measuring. I know it's tedious but that's why you're here, right? To learn how to actually draw and not just to guess. Soften these lines later. I can play with this business later. Let's see, Christian. Two. Really good. So, Christian, the only thing that's really a little bit off here is that this part of the teapot, the bottom part, sits flat. See how you've got it kind of curved like a big smile? Mm -hmm. There's actually a plane shift here. Okay. So if I can sketch it in so you can really see it. But excellent. It's really wah, straight across. Draw this line, straight across up. So when you get that, when you, uh, what's really happening is about here is one side of the teapot. I'll do this with a pencil, right? From here to here. This is one side of the teapot. This is the other side. It's where this part of the part of the teapot turns up. So this really appears a little bit more square. This is the front of the teapot. Good job. Emma, let's see here. Emma, I feel this is too wide. But let me double check. Oh yeah, uh, well, okay. So your width and your height are good. That's actually Oscar's, mine's just coming. Oh, Oscar's, okay. Oscar's, yours is what too wide. You need to bring it in a little bit more on either side. If you need to measure this, the length of this against this, and you'll see it's kind of about here. So if you're wider than here, right? Then you need to bring it in on either side. Good job, though. 
Ani, I feel this looks, it's too rounded. I'm gonna tell you that right now. Um, also the lip rises up above, right? It doesn't, it doesn't go in like this, which is how you have it drawn. Um, but hold on, I wanna double check your proportions. One, two. Yeah, so um, Ani, I want you to, here, hold on. You've drawn this, you've done this. Actually, you've done this. Can you see that? You've done this on either side. So you need to come down, out, and over. That's gonna help right. fix that. <laughs> so what you did is what our brain always likes to do, which is like, I, that's complicated. I'm just gonna pretend it's not happening. <laughs> which is, hey, oh my God, such a left brain. We love yeah. our left brain. That's what it does. Also observe that this is a little bit wider and it sinks down in. Mm -hmm. okay. All right. Emma. Correction. Emma, I'm going to tell you the same thing. You did the same thing as Anik did, and the same thing as Oscar did. Yours is, uh, I'm going to double check your uh, proportions. Hang on. Yeah, I can see it now. Can you see it? Do you, do you want to just fix it? Yeah, I can see it. Yeah, yeah. You did this. But really, there's a little step, right? The rest of it looks pretty good, though. Good job. I mean, it looks so weird, doesn't it? Okay. Anybody else? Uh, for anybody who came in late, we have divided. This is the halfway point. These are quarter points and we have created, and this is the width at the halfway point. So we're figuring out that first. I do not want to see, if you've come in late and you didn't watch the beginning of the demo, I want to make sure you, I don't want to see a teapot with this or this until I see the body of the teapot has the right proportions. So start with the body of the teapot and then we'll go forward. They're tricky, aren't they? Tricky little things. Fortunately, they're really like compelling. Okay. So this happened to everybody. I'm gonna try and show you, Annika, you did this. I'm gonna show you where the turn comes on the teapot. So if you look here, you'll see that this is the quarter point. Here's a quarter point. Yeah. The, the teapot stops going straight about here, and then it goes in to line up with just a little bit above the quarter point. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Also, observe how much the top of the lid comes kind of right up to this handle. Notice how small you all made your handle. Oscar's new. Better, Oscar. Better. Better, better, better. Good job. It's interesting how much, even as I look at this, I'm like, God, it just feels like this halfway point should be further down. But if you're counting the top of the lid, it's up that high. And of course we can continue to correct. But what I'm trying to give you is something that I don't actually care if you get it absolutely right on this first go, but I want the proportions to be right. Yeah, there you go, Ani, lovely. Just double checking. Yeah, looks great. Okay, so now we're going to treat each of these pieces uh, measuring using our using the measurements that we've already got. So the first thing I'm going to do is draw a line here and here. I'm drawing these lines because they're the farthest distance. 
Number one, they create a nice little negative space for us, right? Oh, here. They create a nice little negative space for us. Number two, they really do, I can measure this to figure out how far out to put my teapot. So that's the very first thing I'm gonna do before I try to draw this spout, I'm gonna figure out where the outer edge is. Is anybody noticing a theme here? I'm always trying to determine where the outer edge is before I start to draw something. I don't start by trying to draw this and hoping I guess get it there. I'm actually locating my farthest point. So from say the edge of your teapot here, if I come here, it's, exa it's exactly halfway up the teapot. So let's see from the edge of the teapot to here. This is my outer edge. Does everybody see what I did there? I measured this distance out from the edge of the teapot and I compared it vertically to this distance. And I can see it's it's halfway. So from here to here, I can mark that, right? Then if I want to, I can draw this down and line it up with the base of the teapot, right? And then I can draw this over. And here is the box upon which my tea, my tea spout is contained. Now it becomes much easier. And I'm doing this, I'm obviously spelling this out for you. Right. And there's a couple of other things, by the way. Look at how far down my teapot goes, the spout goes. It goes to here. So here's how far out it goes. Here's how far down it goes. It lines up with that quarter point. Up here, it kind of lines up with that turn, which is just below this quarter point, right, where you turned. So I, I have measurements now and oh, now I have this nice little negative space. So I'm looking at this negative space, right? To sketch out the beginning of my teapot spout. Also, there's a cute little one here, little triangle, they're really triangles, right? And then observe it's kind of in, and then this is going to be the toughest line for you to draw. My suggestion is to break it up into pieces like here, here, really where there are plane changes. So you see I've drawn like a straight line out and a kind of straight line up. And then I can get this, I can start to try and approximate that teapot spout. So there's a lot less guessing. And then there's a little line here, right? To show the edge. Maybe I want to do this. Maybe I'm changing it a little bit. You might find it's still too thick. Uh, I think mine's still a little too thick. I want you to observe. I'm not absolutely getting things right, but it helps me to know where things are. It helps me also to slow my roll a little bit as I'm sketching things out. I think that's worse, but it's good enough. Before we get into any of the details of the so that's that's how we handle that. We don't guess. Everybody who's tried to guess, uh, we've been drawing teapots all week. We'll be doing it tomorrow. We'll be doing it on Sunday, drawing and painting them. Everyone who's tried to guess has got it in the wrong place. There's not one person who has gotten it in the right place. Everyone's had to adjust it. So this is my way of kind of trying to help you use this body, which we've already established to help you figure out where things are. That is essentially what you're always doing as an artist, as a drawer, as an artist, Leo? you're constantly, yeah? Leah, how did you measure again the um, the top of the- The, the outside there? edge? Yeah. I drew a line from here 
yeah. which is where this top edge, right? I drew it out yeah. here and I measured it from here to here. Yeah, and and then the point of the top edge, uh, the uh, the one. Well, I just yeah. looked to see where it where the top edge this lines one, up. Yeah. With, right. Uh, Oh, I look okay, to see yeah, where sure. the top oh, edge okay. lines up with. Uh -huh. No guessing, uh -huh. right? Just right, total, okay. like, I look uh -huh. to see where does the top of the spout line up. That's true. I didn't really exactly say that. I sort of intuited, but I didn't exactly say it. I look and see where does the top of the spout line up, and I draw a line straight across to the body, and then I continue that line over here to the end of the spout. Uh -huh. Right? So whether you're doing it with your with your with your naked eye or whether you're doing it whether you have the capacity right you're, or you're able to be able to draw it out I'm trying to show you what I'm doing I'm looking across like this right like this I'm looking at where the top is and then I can see this natural bottom at you know to my box here right that this is ends up at the bottom of the I suppose I could totally do this too Where the bottom of my teapot goes, but really, this is that's the most important. Uh, let's see. Tani, very nice. Wasn't that helpful? Definitely. And did you notice that you were able to kind of reshape on this side once you got that in mm -hmm. using yep. the negative space? Right, exactly. So we're going to do the same thing on the other side with the handle. Once again, I'm kind of lining up the top edge of the handle. So Christian, what we were just asking about with the, right? With the, how did I figure that out? I go mm -hmm. to the very top edge of the handle. I bring it out to the farthest distance that the handle goes out. And then I bring that down. If I want to, I can go all the way down here. I kind of like to do that just to show because I observed that if people, if I don't do that, people don't see how much space there is between here and the bottom of the teapot, right? But I can, of course, also do this. Um, and then I can measure this distance from the edge of the teapot to here. Ah, interesting. This is very symmetrical. It's the same. It's about half the height of the cup. So I can now come over here, mark the halfway point. I know that if I draw a line from here to here, that my, my handle doesn't come out any further than that. I can bring it all the way down to here, right? So here's my box upon which my handle sits. And then there's some very nice negative spaces there that I can start with. I can at least start with the negative space. Very often when you're dealing, it's really a bunch of curvy triangles. By the way, this seems to line up just below the quarter point. So I can run that quarter point. So I can run that line across like this. Then I can start. Oh, it's not interesting. I did have a quick first step. I can do my handle. Oh, by the way, guys, I've agree. I've gotten Emma Bergman to agree to teach a appropriate class three sessions in May. It's going to be on Sundays. Good. Oh, okay. This part of the handle is kind of straight. And observe that this straight part kind of lines up with the halfway point. So I can even go straight like this. And then there starts to be a curve in. So look at how I'm using negative space to really help me get, oh shoot, I can't even see it, darn it. Here we go. Look at how I'm using negative space. So I'll do that again. I've got this negative space up here. I sketched that in. I have this little negative space. You can see it, right? 
I've sketched that in. Then I see that there's a point where the handle kind of runs straight down. It's not curved here, it's straight. And it runs from about here down to the halfway point of the teapot. And then down here, there's another negative space. So see how I'm starting to get my bearings and then I can Then I can sketch in my inside part. Always in drawing, here is a great general rule. Always when you're drawing something, get the outside perimeters first before you try to draw in any inside shapes. The, it's, so, it's so logical. It makes so much sense. Now I, can, I might have to adjust this a little bit. Maybe I'll bring it down a little bit. Maybe I'll bring it over, right? But I, mo I know that I mostly have things in the right places. So always draw the outside edge of what you're trying to do first. It's absolutely not what your left brain wants to do. Your left brain wants to draw this inside shape, draw that. That's what your left brain wants to do. But if you get the outside shapes first, then you can come in, you have your parameters helping establish where the inside lines are. Does that make sense? Christina, hold on, that looks pretty good. Good job, darling, good job, excellent. Really good. It seems tedious, but what's so nice is now, you know, once we get to the paintings, we've done like the hard part, right? We've got everything in the right places. And, um, for those of you who have that in, now you can start at sketching in some of these shapes, right? These white reflective edges. I'm just sketching them in. We'll probably lose them and find them again. There's some really cool stuff happening here. And very easy to see. I don't know if you observe. Oops, not too far. There we go. You know, reflective edges here, light, medium, dark. It's kind of this thing happening. We're probably still going to emphasize the darks. I'm going to give you leeway to put in as many reflections as you'd like or don't like. This really works. Yeah, Christian. Great. Isn't that shockingly helpful? Oh, um, Christian, I do see something here. Believe it or not, these guys kind of line up. Did you oh, see that? Right. Okay. And you yeah. brought them down. Is it uh, so? Okay. I don't know if you observed. I did that several no. times during the demo. Yeah. I did that. I made. I brought things down too low, and then I was like, "Well, dang, how do I fix that?" Okay. Very nice, Anik. Very nice. Excellent, you guys. Oh my God, we're ahead of schedule. Usually it takes us an hour to get the drawing in. You guys are like rolling, you're narrowing, you're, you're killing it. So you can get rid of your guidelines once you have gotten everything in. Go ahead and get rid of those extra guidelines because we're gonna wanna put paint there, maybe have a little bit less lead or paint mixes. I'm back at screwing up my sheep. I'm going to send them. <laughs> you want to send it over? I don't understand it. I thought you had finished that painting, really. No. You're obsessing. That's all right. Obsession is a good thing. You have something you want to do with it. Yeah. Send it over. Let's see. I did. I see. Um, <laughs> I'm just thinking if I have any ideas for you. Can you do a little bit more detail in the eyes of the two front? Yeah. That, I think, will do it. Just push them, get a little bit more uh, sharp lines in there, some more dark light contrast. 
I think that will make you feel better. I really think you're almost done. Whoever knew a two pot had teapot had all these bloody turns, right? It's like turn, 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 right? Like we think of the teapot is this nice round thing, but really it is not. Monica, let's see. So Annika, do you see that there's a little problem here in your in the edge of your teapot? You've kind of drawn it up. I'm going to show you what you've done. You've done this. Kind of. Oh, don't break this. Um, so you've done this with your teapot. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. I that see. you've tried to draw it like they're the same on both sides. Remember, perspective works on this lid as well. Yeah. Um, once you fix this, you'll find that you're going to need to bring your teapot. Also, the I believe the edge of your teapot. Oh, yeah. This outside edge of your, uh, your handle is too narrow. If you measure here, you'll see it's halfway. Oh, that on there, okay. Yes. Yeah, I measured from the top, I'm sorry. I measured from the lid out. Well, there's this lid, but yeah. the lid isn't- That's where I measured edge. from. Oh, yeah, 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 and then it goes further, yeah. I yeah, see it goes right further there. out. Yeah, yep, yep. I like your uh, spout though, your spout's looking good. It's funny how easy it is to like skip a step. Nice. Go ahead and add in some of your. Don't worry about what the things are. Just look at the shapes that you see, the reflected shapes that you see, and try and get some of those shapes in. If you start thinking about what it is, it's going to mess up what you're drawing. Trust me. It's funny, as I look in the, as I look in the, uh, I'm, my computer is actually facing away from me, my big one, my demo one. So as I look in the mirror, I, as I look away from my drawing, I can see more. I can see more issues with it. Right now I messed up. It really helps as you start to add the handle in to see these kind of outer shapes. So this cross, you can see it. Seen a very nice. I'm going to check one thing. 
Okay, Christina, the only thing off here, shapes are nice, but the only thing off here, observe where the spout and the handle stop. It's just below the quarter point. You have brought yours down a bit lower. You have them down here. So if you can scoot them up just a little bit, right? If I run a line straight across at my quarter point, which is here, that's where my thing is. So there's a significant amount of space. You can see your handle doesn't look right on this side. It needs to come up, so does the Mine just looks totally. Hmm. Nice, Emma. Very nice. So Emma, you did kind of the same thing Emma did, uh, uh, Annika did. You did that, you're doing this with the top, the back end of your lid. Remember, perspective means things get narrower and they kind of near the angle in a little bit on the back half of a of a circle. Yeah, Christian, there you go. We got it. All right, I think we've got enough people ready to start mixing. Let's do this. Let's go to color. So, this is a red teapot. What are the two colors we're going to need to mix? Bring this up here. What colors are we going to need to mix? Is it a warm teapot or a cool teapot? Maybe a combo. Thoughts on that? No thoughts? Everybody's busy drawing this morning. All right. I mean, gonna... huh? Cold? Cold? I think it's kind of, I think it's cold ish, but I think there's a little bit of warm in there. Yeah. Let's talk about it. I'm going to give you warm and cool options in red. And we're going to talk about red. I don't know if we've done that yet for red. So if I were to layer, here I'm putting two reds down. One is cadmium red, the other is quinacridone. Which one is the warm red? The one on the right or the, the one on the left or the one on the right? I vote left, but I always vote, vote left. The left one is warm. Yes, the left one is definitely warm. And it's kind of right above the pot. So I actually think it's probably going to be a combination. It's a bit on the cool side, but I think there's a little bit of cadmium red in there to warm it up just a touch. Um, oh, and I guess we should do a, <laughs> we should do an underpainting too. Um, any suggestions, any thoughts on the underpainting? I mean, we could always do burnt sienna, which is just the simple warm underpainting. We could do green, which would be kind of an exciting underpainting to do, right? Uh, anybody have thoughts on that? I don't actually have it burnt sienna. I would do green. Yeah, we're gonna try it. Why green? Because it's the complementary color and it will lift the red when you put it on. It will. It will totally support the red. So remember the rule of complementary colors. We're going to look at both. We're going to explore both those options. But notice how often complementary colors come into the conversation. Essentially, virtually every decision, Diana, myself, Jessica, people who have been doing this a long time do is think about complementary colors. Uh, so I've got verde and green here. It's kind of a neutral green. Uh, if you do not have verde and green, let me know what colors you do have and I'll tell you what will work the best. Um, so remember that complementary colors, when we put them next to each other, they pop. Right, that's why so many sports teams have complementary color pairing because they want your the jerseys to be super visible. When we mix them together, 
they make a, a sort of muddy version of the others. So we'll be using a little bit of green to mix that shadow. But when we're doing an underpainting in acrylic paint, which will dry next to each other, also works with on top of each other. So if this dries, when this dries and I put a little bit of red on top of it, it kind of works like if I put the red and the green next to each other. It pops things forward. So I'm going to start with a fairly big brush, some Viridian green or any green you've got, but and I'm and I'm working the darkest edges of the teapot. Wow, I realize we don't even have a shadow for this teapot. I'm gonna have to add one. Add one. In this way. So I'm really kind of working the darkest edges. And it's okay if I kind of glaze over into like a little bit of dark in my light areas because we know that we can put anything over acrylic paint, light paint over dark acrylic paint. And in fact, it looks really good to put light paint over dark. I'm moving around the whole subject. So I'm not sort of staying in one place to really identify the darkest areas. I'm going to stop about here. Oh yeah, dark on this side. Look at how just adding the darks in <laughs> with a good drawing, a solid drawing. Look at how adding the darks in really already starts to create a sense of volume. I'm going to take a picture of this. Then I'm going to go feed the little kitty cat, my stray kitty cat. And the crow. And the crow, right. Thank goodness. Ah, Christina, that looks great. Good job. The crow? Yes. They fight over the same food. <laughs> I'll be right back. I'm going to get a little food for the little calico cat. Crows are very intelligent, and Leah feeds one, which I think is fantastic. And last Saturday, it was screaming because the cat stole its food. He eats cat food. Aww. Well, my cat eats my duck's food. <laughs> <laughs> We have seagulls in the, in my yard, which is partly garden and partly parking place for the building. And there is also the also stray cats that have the houses from the foundation. They live there with us, feed them some, uh, sometimes together with a little person who takes care of uh, uh, takes care of them. And there's always a bunch of seagulls that is just waiting there for the food. Oh. Even breaking into the house of the cats. Well, that, in that's London, the one, that's the one right. bird I do not want to be neighbor with. They are oh, so I love noisy. Them. In London, we had some huge ones, and I used to invite them when I had a barbecue. The, <laughs> the crows? The crows? You no, know, uh, seagulls. Oh, the seagulls. Uh, <laughs> and I remember once I cooked this, uh, I barbecued this bonito. You know, it's like a small tuna, very small yeah. tuna. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, I didn't cook it enough so there was a lot of meat left on the carcass you know and it we were happily eating and the seal came and I could see he was kind of asking permission to take it away and I told him to take it away and he took it and it was so heavy for it it kind of he landed on the other side of the street with it but after that he always came to my barbecues <laughs> I absolutely loved it and actually I had a hard time I could never find bonitos again I didn't know what would attract him. And in the end, he liked pork chops. I mean, not pork chops, but lamb chops. He loved lamb chops. They are so funny, aren't they? 
the animals. They're very they, strong. they quickly figure out, even wild animals, wild kitties. This little kitty I feed is like, hi, Tosh. Uh, this little, hi, Natalia. This little, uh, hi, Christina, officially, formally. Um, this little kitty is like super nervous. So she won't let me touch her. And she runs when she sees me, but now she kind of mills around and meows at me, like to make sure I'm getting her her food. <laughs> She's kind of like, meow, meow, meow. She stays far enough away so I can't reach her, but she's definitely making sure that I that I feed her. She was the one taking the crow's food the other day. Yes, yes. And now, so and now. at the same time, I have a crow sitting. It's funny. Uh, right outside my window, there's a little picnic table, and there's a crow sitting out there doing that hello. You can hear it. <laughs> hello. Well, he's not even saying anything. He's just that's his friend up high. He's just oh. like. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. Food. Of course, when I'm done with my sort of dark area, I can water down my green and sort of run over the rest of the painting with light. <laughs> you see that? So I can still, it's still green, but it's lighter. And then I can also kind of run that around the outside if I want to. Though maybe I'll use a little red to go around the outside, just to make it kind of more interesting as a base. This is just a base, right? I'm probably going to put green around the outside of this teapot. I'm not fussy on this layer. I'm just kind of getting some paint down because the I know that the more paint I get down on the first layer, right, the, the better my top layers will look. I just know that, so. This is the part that's so much fun because it's so loose. Be so. Uh, and don't look at Nina Jatania's pictures on Instagram if you want to go on vacation. <laughs> I just, I like it. She's in India for three months and having such a good time. Looks incredible. Once that's dried, my suggestion is to start, is to mix a little bit of red, uh, cadmium red with your quinacridone. Look, it makes this kind of beautiful pinky red color. And then you're gonna start by pulling in just a little bit of green to create a darker version. I don't use black in my shadows. We, we don't, we do not use black in our shadows, not in this class. Um, we mix our shadows using complements to create kind of the value. So you see how I've created this dark value? Then when this dries, it's not quite dry yet, but it'll dry soon. In the darkest areas, I can kind of lay in a nice dark red. And also, look how nice this red looks on top of the green. If I lay the red just here, it looks nice, but it doesn't look as nice. It doesn't look as rich as when I lay it on top of the green. But I'm going to wait. It's not quite dry yet. Take a picture of this, though. Uh, and I think the lesson of this um, lesson, this mixing lesson, is that sometimes things are kind of warm and cool, right? Sometimes they're not one or the other. Sometimes they have a blend of both. 
I mean, I agree that this teapot is kind of a little bit more on the cool side, but it has some warm elements to it. Leah? Yeah. You were mixing quinocridone with cadmium. Yep. I, I don't think I have quinocridone, so I don't know. Um, I've, got some, I've got some, uh, hang on a minute, I've got some other reds. I've got cherry red, vermilion red, um, crimson. Crimson. Okay. Scarlet and crimson are the cooler reds. But also, Emma, lay them out and look at them and just see which one looks kind of more blue, which one looks more red, you know, warm, right? Kind of yellowish. The crimson is very, my crimson at least, is very kind of brown. Hmm. That'll probably, that'll probably be useful. But it's more, um, your mixture's more cadmium. No, actually my mixture's more of the cool red. Okay but you may have to adjust it a little bit based on what you have. So what you want is a cool red and a warm red um, and more cool than warm, but definitely. And you're, and you're saying the cadmium is the cool one. Yeah. No. Sorry. No. <laughs> Look at these. Look at these two. Oh, I'm just, I've got all these in front of me. Different colors. I'm saying the cadmium is the warm. Okay. All right. Maybe the words, maybe the names of the colors are confusing. The, the, the look of them should be pretty clear. This is a warm red. This is a yeah. cool red, right? So uh, look, in, look at your colors and see what you have, right? To that looks warm and cool. In fact, if you want to, put a little test strip of each out right next to each other and then label them what you think they are and send them over to me and I'll and I'll help you see. I'd rather have you learn what is warm and cool than what are the colors because you obviously don't have, everybody doesn't always have all the same colors that I do. So do that, Emma. Put all your reds out um, and then, and then say, take a picture of them. I've put one down. I can't even remember what it is. Now. Well, put it okay. So label it. You can take a little marker. Yeah, I just can't remember which tube it came out of. That's oh yeah. Doing. Okay, so yes, track that. I know it's probably you're like it's Friday night and it's exhausted. You know, you're tired too, right? Like that's like it's like me saying do a sit up and a pull up and a blah 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 at the same time. It's a lot. Of, it's a lot. Of I think I have work to do. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, basically, I've got three, three different warm ones. I'd say, and and any cool. And do you want to send a picture of them to so we can see? Crimson is the um, the coolest. Yeah. All right, then that's what you use: crimson, and then a little bit of one of your worms, or maybe both of your worms. I will send them to you anyway. Just out of curiosity, I love to see them. Maybe cherry uh, red will yeah. work. I don't know. Yes. I, I missed the part where you uh, you used some yellow, did you? No. Nope. And uh, no yellow. No yellow yet. Okay. Uh -uh. Okay. No, nope. there's no okay. yellow in this at all. Believe uh, it or not. I was not. seeing things. Yeah, okay. I I did say <laughs> that certain or a warm orange, a warm red has a little bit more uh, yellow in it. Uh, okay. And a cool <laughs> red has a little bit more blue, but I didn't mix them in. That's just how they look, right? You All can right. see this okay. is slightly orangier. It's got, it looks like it has a little bit more of a yellow tone. Let's okay. see. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, Emma, what's the top one? What's this one? Uh, so that one's the cherry. Uh, that's the, the one. Cherry. I well, you know, you could try it, but maybe the cherry is the best cool. And I'm assuming this is vermilion down here. Yeah. Maybe cherry and a little bit of vermilion. But you know, like try mixing them all. In. You know, you can also try mixing them all in. If anybody else doesn't have the same colors, right? Like Emma, go ahead and send me like little pictures of the colors that you've got. Lay them out and, and get the lay of the land. And send them over and we'll evaluate. 
I like the cherry red. It's kind of pretty, actually. Right. Leah? Yeah? I have a different sort of question. So, yes. Mike, if you take a look at the picture I just sent you, the wash doesn't mm -hmm. seem to be getting absorbed. Does that? It's weird. What are you working with? Are you working on canvas? It's acrylic and, oh, yes. It's, um. But are you working on the right side? Oh, I like your, I like how you're, um, are you, you what paint are you using? Are you sure you're using, um, A, are you sure you're using acrylic paint? I am. Um, and this is what I'm, so that's my paper. See. Is and it? This is my paint. Paper, canvas, paper, canvas. Okay, paper, canvas, right. And that's my paint where it says acrylic. Okay, so acrylic. that's definitely acrylic. Um, and it's the green isn't doing that. Yeah, the green, because I didn't mix it with water. I thought that was, that's how you made the wash was diluted a little bit. You should mix it with water, but it looks like, I have a feeling it's something to do with your paper. I wonder if you're, so, so what I would say is for this exercise, go mm -hmm. ahead and just do non-diluted um, for your wash on the outside, okay. but it's possible you're painting on the wrong side of the paper, mm -hmm. right? It's possible. I don't, it's possible. No. Look at the other side. You want the side that's smoothest. That is what I have, the smoothest. If it's linen paper or something. I don't know. Can you send me a picture of the actual paper, a blank sheet, full size? So. Anyway, um, but go ahead and, and do what you did with the green pot. So use no water. Um, but I have a feeling it has to do with your substrate, you know, your surface. Um, Christian. Okay, so Christian, what which colors are which which colors are cool and which are warm? Um, the the, the like lower this. one is warm. Yes. And the upper ones, the cool. upper one is cool. And then I see you've got a little bit of green here, very nice. And so you're mixing your shadow. Yeah, that totally works. Okay. That's all looking good. It's the paper, Christina. It's weird. Um, and I think I'm looking at, I've never seen. So just do less water on it. And the top layers, it will work better if you use a little bit of water, but just use less water on it. But I think this is kind of an odd, um, maybe it's not primed, strange. Anyway, you kind of figured out how to use it, right? So that it's, it's the paper is kind of a, a slightly quirky. Yeah, it doesn't work if I have a lot of paint on it. If it's watery, then it doesn't go in. Yeah, so you need to just use more paint. Just do what you did with your teapot. Okay. Okay, Diana. I, okay. I think I need a break from this. I think, you, I think it's done. I, do, I just think you're now you're just overdoing it. So I think you should put it aside, but accept that possibly it's done. It looks really nice as is. If yes, I've been telling Christine, I've been telling her that for like three versions. <laughs> I want to paint like that. <laughs> it's, I think, yes, let it go for now. Okay. But I'm not happy. I'm not you're happy. not happy, but like it could just be it's the composition beautiful. isn't working. Maybe you have to make a different. No, I, understand. I understand. I understand. You just have to. You just have to sit on it for a while. All right. But know that the rest of us think it's fine. Um, as this starts to dry, so Christina is actually bringing up an interesting point. Let's talk about it for a minute. Like the more paint and the less water that you use, the kind of thicker and you know darker and denser this will look. So. Um, feel free to kind of skip out on the water, except maybe to like clean up your brush. Um, I right now am putting in darks, one of the darkest areas of my painting, which are really on 
this side, this right side, also in a super dark way, my shadow, which I've added in, right? There's no shadow here. Notice I'm not using much um, water either. So, and I'm kind of going around where I had my darkest parts. I'm adding in kind of dark. You're not saving the highlights, right? Like you would for a watercolor? You yeah, no, them. you get to put those on last because light looks so, because it, this will dry and then you can totally put light on top. Yep, good uh, observation. Yes, we are not saving the, the highlights. Uh, what we are doing, I'm going over and really hitting up the darks heavily. All my darks. Which are kind of about here. This is really where the darkest darks are. And then I'm going to clean my brush out and I'm going to mix. Dutch! Plain. I'm going to mix plain reds together to create a lighter red. And I'm going to start laying that in here. And where it meets with the dark, I'm going to do a little blended edge. See that? Not a sharp, strong edge, just a blended edge. Uh, I'm going to put my highlights in after. So see how I'm like kind of following and here there's no green because this is not a shadowed red in these places. I have a fair amount of paint on my brush too. Can you imagine, Diana did this in about five minutes, something very similar to this. So you see how fast this can go. Notice I'm kind of exaggerating the darks and the lights. I've kind of pushed that a little bit which I think works really well. Although if I wanted to, I could bring a little bit of regular red kind of in over the top of my dark. See how I'm doing that? Blending it over the top. It still reads as dark, but it mutes a little bit. See how I'm blending over the top with that. And uh, Diana, great idea on the, on the, um, on the uh, underpainting, because I already think this is looking very beautiful, right? It's looking super nice. Because uh, the red is, is popping on top of the green. Yeah, this is the great thing. Watercolor is a wonderful, um, medium, but it is the hardest medium you'll use. It's absolutely uh, requires you to be a lot more careful in planning of your um, times. Acrylic is great because it dries in like 10 minutes and then you can add. So look, look at this, Christina. I've got like white here. I can add my white on top and it just glows. There's a little bit of white. There we go, look. See how beautifully, well, that's, it's still wet. But look at how nice that white, like just totally 
cysts on top of my red. If I want it to be a slightly blended color in with the background, I can do this while it's still wet like this. See how nice that is? So I can totally add those in later, um, which is just fantastic about acrylic. I just think it makes it. This is why Diana likes it. She can work super fast, right? And then add, and then just adjust and add later. There's no, right, Diana? Oh, did I, we lose Diana? We lost Diana. This is her greatest uh, argument in favor of acrylic always. And honestly, Diana, right now, I'm kind of painting in pure acrylic right now. I'm not really working in oil. I go through phases. But when I want to do something really, isn't that cool? Look at that. So fast. When I want to do something really expressive and quick, sometimes acrylic is my best bet. I would like to do a, um, expressive, but I, my brush strokes are very careful. I want to just like smear the paint on. <laughs> You know, I think when your drawing improves, you will find it'll be easier to do that. I think it's it's improving the drawing that gives us the confidence to go in with our paintbrush. Um, because you want, you're being careful because you want to get things in the right places, right? And that has more to do with drawing than with painting. So as that improves, you'll see Diana's draw Diana's been drawing for many, many, many years. So is Jessica. Forgive me for bringing you into this, Jessica, right? Like when you when you get to a point where your drawing is solid, then you can paint very quickly because you're kind of drawing and painting at the same time. It's the, but it's the drawing in my experience that really is the thing that pushes painting forward. It's not a funny thing to think about. You think it's one thing. I love this about art. You think it's one thing. It's actually totally the other. Yeah. <laughs> How's it going, Christian? <laughs> <laughs> love that. <laughs> I, I thought I was on mute. <laughs> <laughs> like the moon. Uh, Jessica, we'd love to see what you're working on. Sandra, I don't know what you're working on. We'd love to see it. Send it over. Mm -hmm. I'm not finished here. I'm just kind of, you can see like my right side, my top lid is kind of messy. I can fix that. Leah, before you put the, before you put the white on, did mm -hmm. you off your brush or did you keep some of the red on your brush? I, you know, I just grabbed a little bit of white on top of my red. Okay. Yep. And if I want to, then on the next layer, I can clean off my brush, but it's kind of nice to have them. And I also applied this white while the red was still wet. That also kind of blends it in a little bit. Then I can go back and add my brightest whites after. Because you can see there's a kind of a little hazy part, which is kind of not as like, right? It's not as, not as white. Same here. So Leah, hmm. I did a parrot the other day, but I'm sending you. And uh, I didn't uh, dare do a background for fear of messing it up. Here it is. Oh, it's finished. oh. he's adorable. <laughs> so I figured I'd feel more at ease if I had several parrots. Oh, great. So I'm Super working great. on a new different parrot. So this excellent, is the one I'm excellent. working on now. Oh, Sandra, that's wonderful. I love, actually, I love seeing the parrot at this stage and a finished one. It's so interesting to see how you're processing and layering it. Wonderful. 
wonderful. <laughs> Aren't they just joyous creatures? They're just They're so very joyous. colorful. Oh, they're just wonderful creatures. Yeah, I, and they're very smart too. Yes, I, you know, I think almost everybody, almost every creature is smarter than we think it is. Yes, we completely agree. Some are dumber, <laughs> right? Some yeah, of like us, us. And some humans are dumber, right? We account as creatures as well. Uh, It also, Christina, also, it sometimes helps me to do the same subject more than once. So the second time you get a little bit more expressive because you've done it and you're a little bit familiar, if you have the patience for that. Some people do, and some people really don't. <laughs> so it just depends on you know what kind of person you are in terms of having patience to do that. Um, by the way, I'm adding a little turquoise in and I'm gonna put that in in my background. Help me, because why not? And notice how I'm using this to help sort of shape my teapot. So up here, this is a really good stage. See how I'm kind of actually even going into some pieces of the teapot? I'm going to add a little birdie and green, see what that does. I might end up putting yellow in here just to make my green a little brighter. This is kind of Pepto Bismol y. All right, I need some yellow. Hang on. Hey, Leah. I can still see through. I feel like I've applied a thick coat of paint and I can still see through it. I think it's a problem with your. I think it's a problem with your, um, it's a problem with that. I, would, I wouldn't use that. I would, I would get something else. Okay. Ooh, Emma, that. very nice. Very nice, you guys. Look at how expressive these are. Oh, wow. uh, and Christina, make sure that you have a good, that you don't have, I see. So the problem is this like little scoop right here, right on yours. You know, well, here. so if you can see under the vermilion, uh -huh. I, I can, can still see, see all the green. Yeah, it's a pro. Well, you may have to layer a couple of times. Okay. But also, I just don't think that's a very good paper. Okay. I think it's just not particularly useful for your purposes. That's okay to say. Um, I'll send you some things that I like. There is a, I do have a, so you can see them. I'm wondering too if the the paint itself, maybe it's not thick enough? No, I think it's a problem with the, okay. I really honestly think it's the substrate. And maybe it's the type of paint you're using. I mean, you're not using golden, you're using kind of a cheaper brand. Yeah, it's my daughter's. <laughs> yeah, so that's also oh. the issue. It's probably crappy paint too, right? Okay. Yeah. Um, that's okay. It's good because you learn. I, I think it's really good to work with what you have, don't you think? Then you kind of have, learn some things about it. I do have the blip, but they didn't have the the right colors. Oh yeah. So I went with this one because they did have the vermilion and the red. But I can switch it. Yeah, switch it out. Why don't you switch it out now and, and see, see what happens? See oh, if okay. that makes a difference. Okay. But my guess is it's that paper. It just doesn't look very useful. It's going to be different now. I'm going to have Alizar and Crimson. Oh, Alizar and Crimson is a really nice. That'll make a nice dark. Okay. Wow, I still see the green. It's okay. Yeah, it's I, honestly, 
And are you, are you using Velvet Touch paintbrush? No. No? Just a regular, regular flat. Okay. I really love big flats for assignments like this. And by the way, Emma, I love how that's working. Oh, that's really great. You kind of nailed that one, Emma. Look at this pair, it's beautiful. Well, I think you prefer uh, acrylic to watercolor, that's all I can say. Christian, good. So Christian, work on the background. Get some color yeah. in on your background. And then you're to gonna the go back yeah. in and brighten some of your whites, right? Okay. Which are looking a little bit flat right now. But mm -hmm. add in your background. Now is the time to add in the background. Emma, do that same. Add some background in. I'm just putting in green because it's easy. Because I know it'll look good. Oh, it looks gorgeous, Emma. Very glowy. Yeah. Very shiny. Yeah. So you kind of. Beautiful colors. Got it. Rich. Okay. Which green did you use, Leah? Uh, I'm using Viridian. Cobalt, turquoise, and um, I'm, I mean, on my background? Yeah. Turquoise and um, fun colors like that, turquoise. And I'm using viridian here on the, on the sort of table. You should use whatever you want. This is where I don't like to get too, you know, like the, I think everybody has their ideas about what they'll use. I just think it's nice because it'll help. And I may even cover up some of it because I'm feeling like the green is a little much. So I might go over with like some white and yellow in other part when it dries, but I think it helps to get in this green just to help sort of showcase. Damn. <laughs> so funky. Anik, nice. Very nice. And Anik used blue. I think that totally works. So Anik, now your job is to kind of go around with a skinnier brush and start to clean up. Yep. Right? Edges, add some more dark light details. I'll, yes. I'll demonstrate like this. Oh, so I have this nice skinny brush. Mm. Now I can do things like uh, for my dark, I can mix like green and red, a dark red. I can come in here and add. You know what I mean? Like little pieces like this, actually. Over here, which I haven't really done much, there's like a lot of Christina, what are you finding? Are you finding it's correcting a little bit if um, you're using different paint? Oh sorry. Um, I'm still thinking about. No, still figuring it out. Okay. Yeah, it's not quite. You yeah. can just also let it dry and then layer some more color in. Yeah, that's so what I think. Let that, like, yeah, let that really. Oh, it's very pink. Oh, no, sorry. Use the wrong one. Oh, well. Anyway, it's all, you're, you're just learning. You're just learning. That's all it is. Don't worry. And the beauty of acrylic is you can totally layer over the top. Right? You can totally layer over the top. By the way, one thing I think Ani, Christian, and um, uh, Emma have all showed us is that they haven't put in every highlight. They've just kind of focused on the major ones and look at how much that works. Right, how much that works for us. We don't need to do every single highlight, we just focus on the big ones. So now I'm doing some kind of outlining. I'm trying to get the reflections. 
happening in the handle. When I look closely, I can see there's kind of interesting dark and light shapes. I can kind of decide how much I want to go into it. You like the bristles of the brush to be stiff? Sometimes. Mostly, no. I like working with a more floppy brush. It helps me do lots of different textures. But it just depends on what I'm doing. In this case, I want my brush to be pointed. So, so it's kind of whatever the task is that you're trying to do. Let's see, Natalia. Oh, very nice. <laughs> Leave the drips. They're fantastic. Yeah, it's kind of messy, but I kind of like it. <laughs> I kind of like it. I kind of like it. This is how I'm doing all my paintings now, Natalia. So everything has some of the drips incorporated into them. So I'm into it. Do it. See how I'm going over. I can add in darks and then sort of paint in a little bit into them so they're not so strong. I can put a little paint. You can see here what I'm doing up here. I'm kind of like painting up over most of the of the dark line, but it still kind of reads as dark. And it reads as kind of a full stop, which is helpful. Super. I'm kind of mucking around on this side, I'm using my background to come in and thin out the top of my I like how everybody's looks a little different. It makes me really feel like you guys are starting to, that the lessons are starting to take hold and you're starting to get your flow. You see, I'm spending a lot of time over here. I keep raising up the right size of my teapot down a little bit. Um, Christina, my favorite brush to use is this brush. What brand is? Oh, this from is a one inch craft brush. Oh, okay. 
because look, I can do things like this is an oil brush though, right? So I can, I can like create soft edges very easily. Uh, but like sometimes for something like this, which has a lot of structure, a kind of smooth brush, a smooth flat is more useful. I didn't use that type of brush on this. I didn't use that brush. That's my favorite brush on this assignment because there's a lot of hard edges. Uh, brushes I've used once or twice for oil, but I was saving it for that. Yeah, you, can't use, it. you cannot use oil brushes for acrylic. Don't do that. Painting. Wow, this is really not sticking. My paint is not sticking to the adhering to the paper at all. Even the uh, the better paint. So even if you, yeah, I just use the blick on it, and it's not. Yeah, it's a problem with it. It's just terrible paper. Mm -hmm. You know, it's for paper. Throw it out. Okay. Sorry, throw it out. I'll send you. Actually, I'll show you the canvas pad that I'm using. I'll show it to you. It's super cheap. Uh, and I also have um, a paint supply list, which I'll send you. Hold on, get it. I don't think this was even the cheap of a paper. <laughs> oh, well, it's 10 bucks for, uh, the tag is still here. <laughs> 10 bucks for 10 sheets. So maybe that is cheap paper. That stuff works. When I'm off the uh, call, I will grab the the list. Um, I'll grab the uh, the supply list, the painting supply list, which has all this information on it, and I'll put it across the thread so you guys have it. I, I've done it. I sometimes, you know, I, I forget because I've been working with y'all for so long that some of you don't have this information. So I'll make sure to get that over to you. Uh, the good news, Christina, is it's super cheap. So I'm glad to hear it's not it's not all me. <laughs> it's not you. <laughs> uh, I was thinking acrylics are not my thing. <laughs> no, 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 no. It's definitely the it's definitely the paper. That's a comfort. <laughs> for whatever it's worth. Right, it's worth, hey, whatever keeps you going is what's worth it. <laughs> In my view, if you're like, it can really make a difference when you use the wrong materials. When you use bad materials, it can be very frustrating. Oh, believe me, I've overspent on watercolor things. <laughs> but um, that was my favorite of the, all the media. Mm -hmm. So I just didn't invest in any of the others. And the others, right. So now you're just starting to learn. I'll send over the um, the uh, list okay. when I, um, as soon as I get off the call here, I'll Thank send it you. across the thread. There is a supply list. It's actually in the Art at Work portal. So I can, I can get it there. You don't show you guys any. too, like where that is, because um, that's helpful. It has all the schedules kind of constantly. I think that was the February schedule. I should actually check. Uh, I can kind of see, see how it. I'm coming over, by the way, and kind of like brightening in certain areas. I'm lightening in certain areas my highlights. She's bubbles. Also, notice that it's very easy to make your lines too thick. So be prepared for the idea that you're going to have to thin them out. So if you can see here, I lay these light highlights down. And they're a little bit too thick. So I can actually come in on the middle here and thin them out. So with the water? That. With paint. With paint? Yeah. Just go over with paint. 
So I very often will lay in lines, sort of heavy lines, and then come back in. Here's another example. I'll do it here too. I'll do it intentionally here so you can really see it. So it's easy to kind of make that too thick. Right, that's too thick. So now I can just go in with red paint, kind of thin it out. I love Emma's house. She's surrounded by boys. I remember when we first started these classes, we had this woman, uh, she was in Germany and she had Sorry, a daughter. Shit. I was laughing because I was saying, I was remembering, uh, oh gosh, I can't remember her name. She stopped working for Reuters, so she stopped taking classes, but she was just really into the pandemic because she had this one daughter and it was just this wonderful, quiet experience. And Emma was like, I live with men. <laughs> I can tell you this, but like the difference between your household and your experience of um, COVID and hers was just like super, uh, uh, it was just the difference between, you know, having a lot of girls around and having a lot of boys around. Very, very funny. And then we <laughs> bought two male cats. That was yeah, a big... And you, you have just, it's all male all the time for you over there. Oh, hello, Luca. Luca wants to say hello. Come here, my baby. Come here. Come here. Come here. She's like, I took a nap. Now I'm up. Here, hold on. I'll show you her. The world's most perfect cat. <laughs> hold on. Here she is. What a coincidence. I have the perfect dog. Dogs. Yes. Yes, we all have the perfect cats. Here she is. Look at her little face. Yeah, baby. How old is the cat? She's 14. I found her on the streets of Armenia 13 years ago. Oh, wow. She's been with me ever since. Oh, I got white on my chin. <laughs> You keep your wedding ring on when you're painting? You don't wanna? Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah, I do. Sorry about that. No, Didn't that's okay. Observe. It's a totally valid question. Yeah, I probably shouldn't, but I do. It's who I am, you know? Like, so I get, you know, being a painter is so much a part of who I am. I don't, if there's a little paint on my wedding ring, that's it. But uh, if for those of you who are neat, who are more normal and neat, you should probably take it off. See how I'm once again kind of reducing that so it's there, but it's not so strong. Oh, that shapes. You can play around with this forever. On the flip side to doing it quickly, right? There's a lot of playing around you can do. Just sort of the fun part. Mm -hmm. Is anybody having fun with this yet? Me. I, I kind of feel like I'm making it worse. Send it over. As I go along. Oh, send it over. Oh, send it over. You <laughs> send it over. Let's see. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Let's paint the detail. Is somebody jumping on your painting, Amanda? Is that you? 
Uh, send it over. Yeah, let me take a look. Oh, you guys are looking wonderful. Um, so, Chris, I would just. Uh, so this is a little bit too dramatic. So mm -hmm. mix in a little bit of red and push it back a little bit. But also okay. take your yellow. I think this needs a little bit of reshaping. So right here, you can actually see so your guys kind of here. I'm going to show you your guys mm -hmm. kind of sticking out too much here. Okay. Right, like that. So I can yeah. go right in with my background color. Get rid of that. All right. Yeah. So I can trim that out back over. I think that's going to help. I think the other thing, I really like what's happening in here. So I think you really just need a little bit of reshaping on the sides. And I also think your white is too white in most places. So okay. I would go back over it. I mean, you're getting there, really, quite honestly. Look at kind of what's happening up here. I'm going to send another picture so you can kind of see. closely what's happening up here. Uh, let's see, I'm gonna send that over so you can look. You're on the way, I guess is my point. Um, it's just kind of looking at transitions more. Oops, there we are. Uh, pulling back your lights a little bit in most places. You'll notice that the lightest lights are, are very, dim. There's not that many yep. super bright lights. And it's often about, look, I'm actually, I'll do it over here. It's often about like, can I fit? This sometimes it's about kind of trimming things up. Maybe you need a little bit more dark in your background, a little bit of variety in your background. I'm kind of going around and going to where all the edges of the painting are, where one edge meets another. Mm -hmm. And I'm sometimes firming them up here. Right. So that's essentially, you're just continuing to kind of work around I haven't really resolved what's happening here yet. I think I feel like I need this to be later. So I'm not super happy with my spout, but I'm not returning to my spout first. I'm working around my spout first, right? To see if I can get it shaped the way I like. Oh yeah, that's a little bit better. Oh, my battery is low. Hang on. We've got 10 more minutes. Whoops. Oh, Leah came back. back. Sorry about Welcome that. Back. My computer just went whop. We <laughs> like figured. Just, uh, uh, here, hold on. There we go. I'm back. Christian, one of the things I wanted to, to mention, and you're in yeah. the beginning of this process, you're seeing the lights and the dark. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah. You're seeing the lights and the darks well, but you're, you're kind of missing the midtones. Right? So mm -hmm. the midtones are somewhere between light and dark. If you think of your values on a range of like one to five, right? Five mm -hmm. being dark, one being light. Um, 
you're you're wanting to look more at once you've got your basic lights and darks and you kind of want to look for areas where you can see a midtone somewhere mm -hmm. in between and adjust it with a little bit more paint a little bit of white maybe a little bit of green right uh, maybe a little bit more light red paint can lighten it up just a little bit um mm -hmm. so that's what th you're just kind of uh uh, starting to see that and also really paying attention to the soft edges that are kind of around the teapot, but um, the hard edges of the, the reflections, that kind of thing. So you're just kind of like, you're just, I think that you're just going to, what I want you to keep doing, and I just sent a picture before I left, is look at the spout and look at all the different layers of value that are in the spout if you can get that then you can start to find them other places yeah 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 but you're doing good this is just the beat right these guys have all been doing this for a long time <laughs> right guys a think, long time go ahead i think the problem is also that i only have one warm red and mm -hmm. several cold reds and somehow um, you can add a little bit of yellow to your cold reds to make them slightly warmer if you want. Mm -hmm. to. Yeah, if you want more variation. Yeah. Although I'm only using one warm red yeah. and one cold red. So it's also just kind of learning about the mixes, getting them right. I was in the middle of adjusting my thing when my computer went out. So here, hold on. Hello, Yeah, I think even if you look at the dark and the light side, the light areas in the dark part of the teapot on the right, even the lightest areas, most of them are two or three. They're not a one. The ones are mostly on the light side. Can you see that? So it's easy to kind of think of them as all the same. But um, it, anyway, you're doing great and it just gets better. It's also probably a little bit trying to figure out how to get the brush to do what you want it to do. That's true. It's a, it's a tools thing. For yeah. some people, the brush is a really natural instrument. Um, I will be honest and tell you it was for me. That's why I started painting in the first place, because the brush felt easy for me. The pencil was not, and I struggled with the pencil. Uh, and I have found my peace with the pencil, but the brush, I could just do things without really thinking about it or describing it. For other people, the pencil is easier, brush work is harder. So the beautiful thing about uh, art is that there's always something that's hard for somebody. <laughs> you're good at rather. Right? Like nobody's really good at everything. Like you can get better at some things, you can get proficient at all the different things, but like, that's what's kind of, it's the great equalizer. Hello, boo. Hi. Oh, hi. Hi. You've got about like three more minutes. Take that time to do, see if you can add a little bit of depth to your teapot. And then I'm going to um have you I'm gonna pull the recording I'm gonna pull the spotlight off and have you guys all show your work to each other I know we've been looking at it but I want you to be able to look at it far away give me one second like that
Jessica, are you still here? Because that's just a yeah, stunning here. drawing. Oh, girl. Oh, I'm not even close to done. <laughs> I know this you're not. Slow it's one. wonderful, though. It's wonderful. Oh, really, really. Thank great. you. I have a lot of practice that I need. Just noticed it dries a different color. <laughs> uh, it lightens a little bit. It lightens a little bit. Let's see if we just here's cross. Um, oh, Annika, nice. That's coming along. All right, everybody, I'm going to remove the spotlight, put yourself in gallery view, and hold up your painting. Let's see what you got. Or your drawing, or whatever you're working on. Diana, where are you? I want to hide now. <laughs> no, no, no. Come on, hold it up. Let's see. It looks terrible. Well, just let no, it go. they let don't look go. terrible. They look let great. I like the parrot, Chandra. Oh, oh, thank you. I like your, your faces. They're amazing. Your hold it up, Christina. Hold it up. Quit hiding it. It's very different from the oils you <laughs> train. Two ones. Yeah, oh. I draw a lot. It just, I don't post them usually online. Oh, Maybe Christina. Instagram. Oh, yeah. Very nice, you guys. You got it somewhere. Um, there, Christina, uh, yeah, take your background off. Christina, we're waiting for you. So, <laughs> like, turn I don't want to be in this thing. <laughs> <laughs> We're waiting, so class is here until you show it. Hold it up. Just hold it up. Oh, sorry, it's still blurred. Uh, there you go. There we go. Actually, Christina, it's like, it's just really, it's literally, this is a problem with your paper. Okay. I've done an admirable job considering. These are gorgeous, you guys. Absolutely gorgeous. Aren't they wonderful? Yeah, it's they fun. Kind of They're wonderful. fun little teapots. They're I'm fun make little tea right after this. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's what I thought. I'm picking like the comfortable things. So tomorrow we'll do a teapot in black and white, and yeah. Sunday we'll do a red teapot in oil. So and then we'll move on to something else. Or if you want to, you can jump onto the class and do a, do it in acrylic if you want. But the demo will be done in oil. So for everybody, hmm? there a landscape pastel class on I, Sunday. Don't know how to think check. so. Right? I don't think so. I don't okay. think so. Thank you. Um, all right. All right, you guys. Have a great Thank weekend. you, Leah. Thank Wonderful you work today. Thank you. Wonderful work. Bye. See you soon. Bye. Thank you. Bye, guys. Bye. Great Bye. work, everybody. Bye, guys. Bye.